Hey, we live, we live, we live, we live. Hey, we live, we live. We live, we live. That's a good snap right there. Hey, we live, we live. Today you tuning in. This is a rain check show. We up in Harlem. Hey. You know what I mean? Oh, my bad. All right, girl. Hey. Harlem. Hey, okay. So, um, but we up in Harlem right now. Uh, came back out here because a good friend of mine. And I like to have conversations. My interviews, and I said that I've always said I want to do it. I want them to be, um, I want to do a, a million. It doesn't have to be different people. It can be different. I mean, it doesn't have to be the same person. It can be different people all the time, you know. But I just want to know that. All right, so I want to, I just want to know that. My bad, we live. Like I always say, I'm stuttering, I'm messing up. I'm just trying to get this right. So she's going to tell you a little bit about herself and what she's doing now. And then we're going to have a conversation about some things that we have a little bit similar uh, understanding. Yeah. Yeah, right. Hey, everybody. Um, it's Twala. For those of you that follow me on Facebook, Twala Gooden. For those of you that follow me on Instagram, follow Quickies. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Twala. I'm the I'm a comedian, I'm a personality, I am a dance instructor and now I am a women's empowerment facilitator and a motivational speaker. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. So this kind of stuff I wanna do though too, I'm not gonna lie, motivational speaker and I'm getting into some stuff while I'm out in Cali, so I'm I'm excited about it. What is Cali like?
can be real quick, right? Mm -hmm. So just for some people that don't know what a hysterectomy is, just explain that part about it. Okay. So a hysterectomy is you the removal of your uterus or the removal of your uterus, cervix, tubes. Or the removal okay. of your uterus, cervix, tube, ovaries. Try to say that ten times. I didn't even really want to say it again. You know, it just hurt me inside. Just, you know, if you know what? I'm a surgery type of person. Man. Here's the thing. Cool. And they display women's personal business on TV all the time. Oh, you ever see a woman swinging on the swings for a tampon commercial? Well, let me just say some of those commercials. You don't think that's crazy? Like, they're like, yeah, it can happen, but it also causes deaths. But I really, I mean, you know, cancer. You're like, what? Like, who does these things? We got people out here doing awareness work. What? And they're like, give it to me. Like, no, this is so, it's so euphorically. It's like a woman walking through the night. Very graceful. Really know nothing about them. I'm just asking. That's, yeah, exactly. just that's exactly why. That's I'm not even going to say I feel exactly your pain. That's exactly why, though. Because I don't want to feel that pain. You know, neither do we. I know. We want to wake up. I guess. One week, like we have this one week that we dread, and we, it's it's for some women. If you live your life a little risky, you it, you're, you look forward to that week because you like, okay, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> for some women, it's it's dreadful. You're bloated. You're moody. It sucks, man. No, yeah, that is a sin because honestly, you know, y'all pain grows onto us. You know, you know, you. Yeah, we make y'all life a little bit now. Yeah, it's crazy sometimes. See, there you go. That was a pain. Yeah, that was a pain because you just did something wrong. <laughs> I don't play that with nobody. You see how she got hurt and I ain't touch her? He's sending his bugs after me. That's what I do. They, they bite. But um, but what I, what I want to ask about it too is that um. But well, we was having a conversation about yeah. it's 2017. You know, it's different. It's a different era. A lot of stuff is going on, and you have to be a little bit more forward with your kids and people around you that you really care about, right. and be very straightforward as much as possible. Because if they find out these things by themselves or in the back doors, or by, you know, you never know what can happen. You know what I mean? What do you mean? As in, like, if you, if you don't tell your kids about drugs or smoking or something, then they go, they, you just tell them, no, don't right. do that. But you don't tell them why, well, what's the what's the, uh, right. what's the reason, and give them that option to say no, then they're gonna feel like they gotta go do stuff behind your back. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Yes. The key 
to becoming a well-rounded person is knowledge. As long as you have the knowledge, you can make better decisions in life. What do you yes, think? Yes, I think that's true. Okay. I think it's true because we can't have a conversation. Uh, okay, think about it like this. Between me, you, and a baby, right? A baby that just came with a uh, mother. Like, who's gonna have the best communication? The baby. Between um, between us, us three. But can the baby talk? No, the baby can't talk. Right. The best communication. Yes. Me. And who else? It's out of two people out of the three. No, I don't. I don't know. What I want to say. You. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, you know what I'm saying? Like the baby is basically is a is a blank sheet. So they're only they're only getting as they're growing. The babies are the purest. They have the purest form of love. And as we get to gain knowledge, we lose that. Yeah. But the baby or us. No no no, I'm not saying enlightened. I'm talking about you now. Who's no the baby is? Baby. Yeah, but what so I'm, saying, like you, I'm you talking about like I'm talking about communication in the sense of like understanding of knowledge, right? You said mm. the only the key to life is knowledge, right? And I'm trying to tell you that that's true because me and you know things because we learned it. The baby come out is a blank sheet. That's, right. that's why it's pure, right? So it's like now that pure thing is really an image of the world that is was around as it's here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because some people don't leave their neighborhood, so that you only know what you know in that block. That's okay. Oh, in that facility. Right. So that's why your mind is so limited, limited to that. Like, no, I can't leave the block. Or I don't want to do this. Or I don't want to do that. And some people are hurting so much at where they're at. They won't leave because they're scared to feel where they're going to leave. Yeah. But they might do 10 times better out there than yeah. here. Yeah, that's and that's fine. what I've learned for myself. Like, going out and living in, like, going living in Atlanta. They're going to Cali. I'm like, I love being in Cali. And I love the, the certain type of environment it has for me. It makes me feel good. So it's like, that's what I want. But I also still, because my kids are here in New York, I still want to have my kids. Or, like, be able to travel back and forth to show them things. Or take them on trips because schools are great. But those are not what our kids should be only learning life about. Right. You know what I mean? Because everybody, you really think about it, right? Everybody goes to school. Everybody's supposed to get this certain job or one job. But realistically, millionaires have seven sources so of income, on. right? Who says? So this is this is my thing. Go ahead. Even when I like when I do start my, my uh, motivational talks and my support groups, my mission is to challenge the American dream. My mission is to challenge what is considered normal. Because who said your normal is my normal? Who yeah, said that? Like, that's the I, truth. Who, just like, I have to say this, I, I may think I sound crazy, and to be honest, I don't care. Just for example, like words. They're like, this is a sneaker. Who said? Because somebody up there decided to say this is a sneaker and we have it's to call it a sneaker. It's just a form of though, too. But so who says like, this page. form of communication? Which Supposedly. designed by who? Designed you know by people. Yeah. Now, I'm an individualist. You're an individualist. We're, yes. all, we're all individuals. Now, why should we? I'm not saying go around and call this a table. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. Please don't misconstrue that. What I'm saying is, the, the American dream is designed by who? And who said we have to live this dream? And so many of us end up with mental health issues and depression well yes. depression is mental health issues so many of us end up with mental health issues because we we fall short of this image of what america supposed to be is. here and that's why like for me now i don't feel like i have to force myself into something because i know who i am i know who i want my kids to be i want them to be open i want them to be well-rounded i want them to be smart i'm going to raise them as best i can because i want them not, not to just live like because oh people say to do this or that you live because yeah those are options but right. you don't have to just be limited to one or two or three you can do what you want but you know it's a consequence for everything that you do of course so that's where you gotta understand to come in where it's like okay yeah if i work hard for these amount of years and i get i could save up all this money and when i get old i can go do this and that but nobody's promised tomorrow so you can work hard right and you, can't and you get old and then what, what about you get old enough and you get a disease or something god forbid uh -huh. and you're not able to do nothing i'd rather find something that i can short-term stuff that i can like work up to now and still enjoy it with my kids not right. just okay. straight working and not you know i want to do some straight work with like months at a time and then me and my kids go out for months at a time you know right. what i mean so that's right. how for me i'm looking at it all that's i want it to be yeah that's my american dream so yeah my american dream looks like this 
helping others find their greatness and live their greatness. That's my American dream. I want to help people enjoy life because trying to live up to somebody else's expectations, you're already starting at a failing point. You're already designed to fail. You can't go into a conservative party like that. They're going to look at you like crazy. They're going to expose you out because you don't fit. But if you do that and you find a community of people that's laying in the grass with you and their shoes is off and they may be new, who knows, you know, whatever y'all into. <laughs> that's where you belong. And it's, I think it's just about finding your community, you know? Yeah, it is. It definitely is because once you, it's like once you find it, you, can, you kind of settle in the sense that like your spirit feels good because, you know, you got a lot of people that you probably grew up with and they live somewhere else and talk to them, like, yeah, I love it out here because of blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it's really just finding those. You in LA, being out there, have you found, have you found more like-minded people like you? Yeah, I have. I found like, honestly, for me being in LA, like I've ran into so many different people and like celebrities and all this and that. And... You know me, I'm not really like, oh my goodness, this is that person, you right. know, like take pictures. Like, nah, if I don't know you, I really don't want to take a picture with you because <laughs> I, I don't know you. Like, right, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, uh, at least when I have like, a little conversation, but feel a vibe, not just because you know or you are an actress or something like that, but um, I've been meeting good people for the most part. I know they say you can meet some people, you gotta watch them, but I've ran into some good people. I got some good stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about my future and like financially and my for my kids. So that's for me out there. It's great. Right, you know I mean? yeah. Do you want more kids? Do I want more kids? Not really, no. Mm -hmm. but I, I would want. I would, young. Yeah, I would say I would want one more kid, but I don't think I want to because I think I'm. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm still kind of mentally going through it with the other kids. So I'm just like, nah. I have two kids. Yes, Just two too. kids. Just two kids. Yeah, my son. My son's birthday tomorrow. So you know we Happy got to turn. Happy birthday, Yeah, that's oh, young Heston, Heston, young Heston. Yeah. Yeah, my boy yeah, is crazy, but I love him. He be there, like, he be tall, he, you know, he get mad, he's like, he's like, no. And then he's like, come in, he must have like, no. He walks back, he don't want you to touch him, put his hands up. How old is he? He's gonna be two. Oh he's crazy. God. He's like, he has his own mind. He's already like talking, he's like, he's like, oh, where's daddy? He's like, there. He's like, I don't know. Or like, you know, really? he says like stuff like that. So yeah, it's cool. I'm, I'm happy that he's advancing. I'm saying thing with my daughter, she's like, great. She's learning, you know, just kids that they pace. You know, it's good to have healthy kids. You know what I mean? They may not be where I want them, and you know, because they're young, but they still grow. You know, like, and that's all at, at every age of their life. I may not want them to be at a certain part or like development wise. As a young father, what advice do you have for other young fathers that would like it's, to be in the position you, you are in in terms of career? The biggest thing I can say about people, even though you're trying to interview me to death right did now. Did you see that? Did you see I already saw it after you did it like a couple questions, but okay, well, you, don't really, well, you don't really flip it on me though, but I just talk <laughs> because we have a good conversation, right? But the thing people have to understand in life, right? When it comes to, only way I can tell you something about life is for, for example of mine, right? And in my life, I know I've been through a lot 
and I've been doing a lot with my kids, mothers, but the thing is, they don't have bad intentions. They want my, they want the best for the kids. So I don't want it to be like they're having, it's just that people sometimes growing, it, it, it's it's like a tug of war in a sense, right? It's I'm on one side, she's on one side, the kid is in the middle. And it's not like that on purpose, right. but that's just how life is because you have a way you want to raise them. This person has a way. Regardless if you come together and say you want to raise them the same way, you still have some kind of way, right? right. And everybody's not going to, gonna always click on every decision or what's going on in their life if the person's doing more taking care of more i mean better the kid or this or that some people need certain things in their life to keep them going mm -hmm. you know so so i can't be mad at somebody for doing their best regardless if it stresses me out sometimes because but if my kid is still good mm -hmm. then i'm happy with that it's gonna be a lot it's been a lot of like it's a lot of battles that i lose that i may want to win or i may want to argue about but as long as my kid is good and Certain things I feel like, as a man, when you're a man, you have to take it as a man problem in the sense of if you, your your daughter, your son, or whatever is with the mother all the time, but you want it a certain way, you gotta understand you can't change their life. You have to work around that if you're not around. You know what I'm saying? That's the hardest part dealing with it because as a father, you just want to be able to be like, yo, I need this, I want to do it like this, but it's not that easy. But it's also it's like a two way street. You know, you gotta figure it out. It's not going to work. I've, I've had like some crazy stories I talked about just in general. I've heard from other people with their baby mothers and stuff. And it's like, people are crazy when it comes to kids because they want the best. And they want to look like they are having the best and the best. But sometimes they live outside their box. You know what I'm saying? I keep it real with everybody. I don't need to. I'm not a materialistic person. The only thing I do like is my sneakers and my shoes. I'm always, the pants go a lot. I don't really, you know, I'm not going to crazy cheap stuff, but I'm not getting nothing expensive. I'm getting something that looks presentable. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get by like this, I bought this from Target. It was like $6. I don't care about these shirts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and this right now, I bought this from my friend. We got the Harlem Head of the shop over here. And oh. I said, I'd rather buy something from somebody that's making something. You understand? Like, I'd rather buy that. Like, if I knew somebody's making clothes or something, I want to buy that. Or I, then I'd be like, okay, cool. But anything else, this is going to be Target. This is some old buffaloes you've had for like 10 years already. You know what I mean? Like, I got like old stuff. I just never grew out of it. Yeah, old soul. Exactly. I only need like I only need to just look presentable. You know what I'm saying? Right. As long as I smell good and look presentable, that's oh, good. You smell that? He smell great. He smell great. Yeah, man. I took a shower today. You know, he's you know. He's not lying. He's not so great. I'm not gonna see myself. I said, I'll take one shower. <laughs> you know what I mean? One shower. But anyways, nah. Um, life is really what you make it. Right. It sounds so black. Every time I say it, it's but people don't understand. Like, like it's really, really what you make it because it doesn't matter if you think they're a millionaire or whatever. They all had to go through the same struggle. Right? Unless it's like somebody, you know, they got the low percentage of people that um, go into the money. But we are all as humans very smart. So there's always some way, but you just gotta push yourself. So when you think you're tired, you did enough. You really didn't do enough if you're not where you want to be. That means that you're not doing enough. You wanna know a trick that I well, it's a little model I live by, right? So I, picked, I got Choice tattooed on my hand. You okay. can see it. And I tattooed Choice on me because that's the difference between someone that has lived their dream and someone that is still dreaming of their dream. You actively making a choice and saying, I'm ready to pursue what makes me happy. I'm ready to be the dreamer. And it's literally that that moment in life where you make that choice and you're like this is what i want and everything after that the universe kind of it kind of follows you it kind of opens yeah. up once you but you got to be willing to go out and not be scared to fail you gotta understand everybody fails i'm sorry go ahead no you don't understand how much of a disservice you're doing to the world because you have something that you can give to us that we can't get from nobody else because you're you you're uniquely and wonderful you and if you don't make that choice one day to say you know what i got something to share then now we're, we're lacking in something exactly and that, that that's the thing people are scared to fail 
You can't, you know what, it's really not feeling. It's really learning because if you really are a person that's resilient and you go and do something and you feel it, then you come back and you learn. You gotta keep learning. If you fail it again, you learn. I has been plenty of times when I was working, even for like, um, you know, uh, what is it, the board of education? Mm-hmm. And I had to take certain tests and I failed it probably like once or twice. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go do it again because I know I can pass it. Right. I just gotta do more studying. Like, people are scared to fail. People have excuses. It's about money, this and that. Like, yeah, but if you, yeah, live. Yeah, there you go. People are afraid to live. So there you go. So we're gonna take that. And we're gonna run with that. We gotta start living. Um. So the voice that you hear in the yes. background. It's, it's not Jesus. Which I don't know. They're like, who's that? Jesus? Oh yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. It is Abu. Come on, Abu come on. Shana. Abu Jana is a world, I'm, I'm saying this, a world-renowned artist. She is a painter, she's an artist, she's a carpenter, she's a mother. Come on in, I'm she's, come in, come in. You're all the way in now. You in, she's in? Yeah, you're all the way in. You laugh, You in there, you in there, you in there. Come, come, come. I'm not staying here. No, you're so okay, you can say Hi, everybody, nice to meet you. So this is Abu. So that's the voice that you were hearing. She was more, she was prophesizing. For y'all back there, she was kicking and y'all didn't even know what was going on. Yeah, so this is this is her right here. We just having a conversation, and that's why I try to tell you people out there too. If you want to have a conversation, you can call me. I always or come out. Or, even though I'm not gonna be in New York too long. I'll be back in Cali in a while. But I want you to tell them a little about what you do too. Mm-hmm. Not, yes, right now, not, not right now? Not right now? Not right now? Not right now. Okay, okay. So, wow. Right now. <laughs> I wanna. You wanna really elaborate? Okay. I want you to talk about. Yes, so we gonna talk a little bit, a little bit more about her stuff real quick. This is your time. Yeah. Oh, that's alright. <laughs> <laughs> soft, soft, soft. Oh, soft. Oh, oh, soft. Oh, oh, soft. Right. Mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> move back. Oh yeah, you know we trying to get position right. You ready? Alright, we good. So, so now we do want to talk a little bit more about um about your 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 motivational speaking that you're doing and a little bit of everything else. So, um, back in 2012, I started a group called SELF. And SELF stands for, not DJ SELF. <laughs> not part of the winning team. Um, um, Shout out to you, SELF. Love you winning. Love movement. Love everything yeah, you're winning out here. Winning. Winning. Um, SELF stands for SELF. And the S goes with E L I. So, it's self-empowered, self-love, self-first. And the tagline for it is, real love starts with you. I started SELF in 2012 um, for team for young women, teens, okay. because um, I was a young woman, and Harlem, Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx, Staten Island, there's parts of those, there's parts of those communities where we're not as privileged as others. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I'm but I'm saying it. At risk kids. Um, but you know, growing up in impoverished neighborhoods, you tend to go up a little early. Yeah, because you, do. you 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 understand your environment. You're, you're facing yes. a lot of adversity, you're dealing with a lot, you're 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 already growing up with strikes against you and you gotta overcome all these things and being a young woman, growing up, trying to figure out where you belong, trying to fit in, trying to achieve an American dream that's not yours. You when you fall short, it's hard. It's hard, especially for women, because we deal with esteem. We got to deal with love. We got to deal with family. We got to deal with school. We got to deal with beauty. We got to deal with this. We got to. Do- it's so much on a young woman that if you fail one of those those lists of things that's put on you, you feel like a failure. Yeah. And in the process of feeling like a failure, you can end up in a lot of bad situations, looking for the right, looking for that validation, looking for the right answers. My goal and my mission is to. Help these young girls know that they're enough, and whatever their dream, American dream is, that it's okay. That that's their dream, and they're gonna pursue it. And don't allow family, friends, anyone to tell you that who and what you want to be is wrong. Because nine times out of ten, we walk around carrying other people's baggage, other people's emotions, other people's beliefs, other people's values, and it ain't ours. And we shame ourselves because we don't. We're not living up to all the baggage that we carry. And like he said, the baby's born clean slate. So every time a child do something that the parent think is wrong, the child get popped. But who said it's wrong? I mean, 
mean, playing with fire, okay, you get what I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not that extreme, but we're, we're shaped and mold into becoming these people that our families or our parents deem that we are. So now, after that, you set into the world to figure it out on your own. And that usually happens around 13. Isn't that when you get most of your freedom, like, you start hanging out with your friends in high school? You, 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 you figuring it out. And at college, you get it. Your parents are hands off, it's, it's all on you, but... That time, from 13 to, I would say, 21, is where you actually need the most interest. Yeah. You need, it's like zero to five. Okay, five to 13 is cool. You know, it's a, but 13 to 21 is your most trying year. Yeah, no, it is. That's why I say you gotta build a lot at them younger ages. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why it's tough for me now, but I have my five year plan and I know that you know, when you have plans like that, when you when you really have a, a long-term plan and a short-term and all those plans, they work out in a, it sounds crazy, in the long-term because even though people may do stuff to deter you off of it, it's still your goal so you know how to jump back on it, right? So it's like you might be on that train, you might get off a couple stops, but you know you got to get back on it to get right. home. So the right. home is trying to get oh, to the like goal. You know what I'm saying? That. So I might use that. You might use that. I just threw that up right there. I'll you know give you 10%. 10%? All right, cool. <laughs> But basically, you you gotta you gotta get back on it, right. and and for me, I have that right now. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you I have the easy life. Hell no, I got struggles, all of that. So like, it, it be times where I want to give up, but you just gotta keep pushing yourself through it because you, you gotta, gotta get, get to home. that. You gotta get home. Gotta That's get it. Home. You know what I mean? I love that. That yeah. was that motivational great? speaking. Just you take that. But you know, home. but that's my thing. I want to get into motivational speaking too. But we about you. So another thing I know she saying about the show. I mean dance class let's talk about that so we want to talk a little bit about the dance class that she has so what she does all day is i'm gonna tell you the requirements you gotta have a thong and you gotta be able to twerk no i'm joking none of that none of that this is very regular stuff i'm just acting stupid but no she has a very good I'm trying to so you know what scene you know you're really active and you want to dance so it, I think it's a good class. Yeah, we have people, you know me. I like to dance you see the beginning of the show, you know, right. I make it my sense. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So it's about dancing and it's about not being ashamed of your culture. But tell a little bit more about your dance class. Um workout is workout is about is about finding the part of your in It's about coming into a uh, a community of people and enjoying yourself. And losing weight while doing it um it's a it's a party I, I it started because i love to party if you know me you know i love to party and <laughs> when i say party i mean dance if you know if you go to a party and you know i'm there i'm in the middle of the floor every time pulling people that's sitting down you know what i'm saying like, bring it back. like you know she be doing like that on mario you know you be milli rocking oh my milli rock is 30. Okay. Oh, okay. i have a milli rock battle yeah. I don't really know if you're ready, and I don't want to really like just do that to you. You know what I'm saying? Because you're already sweating. You're too nervous. Like, hold on. Just mix it up. I put it on. And now I'm over here like a glazed chicken cutlet. Oh, look at all good. Yum yums. I am. The yum yums. I feel like I'm starting to sweat through the cut, but. No, no, you're alright. We almost. We almost. Hold on, hold on, Kylie. Workout is literally for the party goers. It's for the people that would love to be a party goer. It's for the people that. Always seeing this girl dance and I'm like, Dad, I want to dance like that. Or I want to learn how to millie rock. Or I want to learn how to do these things. You come to my class and you learn how to do it. And you, when you walk into a club, you walk into a party, you're confident. That song awesome. come on, you're oh, like, hey. oh, boy. You get it. Hey, hey. <laughs> but no, that is cool, though, because it, it's fun. You know, you can do that even. Do you do it with kids? I, oh, so my Monday through Friday, there I you teach walkout kids. I teach from one to five-year-olds. That's I teach good, them how to walk, how to jump, how to dance, how to use their fine motor, gross motor skills, and I help build their physical development. So where is this located at? Well, workout kids, I do it at schools. I go to the schools and do it in their classrooms. Okay, okay, okay. But workout will be starting in July. Look out for it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Get, okay. your, get, your, get your spandex. You got uh -huh. spandex? No, I ain't got no spandex. Get your basketball shorts. See, look, oh, we got family. There we go, basketball shorts. That's what I do. Get your basketball shorts. Yeah, get your spandex. Can you dance? You don't have to know how to dance. I want you not to know how to dance. I want you to come in there with no dance skills that and walk out of there. That ain't going to be, be me. You're going to be a professional dancer. Me, I'm doing every dance. It don't matter what it is. I it can is? do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm really rocking. 
Um, you know, electric sliding, um, margarita. What's the margarita? No, no, no. Macarena. Macarena, yeah, macarena. Yeah, macarena. Yeah, macarena. Yeah, macarena. Yeah, I did. In other words, he does a two step and it's. <laughs> That's it. Hey. He said I do hey. margarita. I don't want to play with you. Y'all know, they know me out there for the floor. For the floor. Mm -mm. For the flow. That's what you call it. For the flow. What's the like, flow? I dance. For the flow. For the flow? Yeah. What's you know, the flow? When I get on the flow and I be dancing. For the flow? Yeah. You know how to dance. The flow. How I dance, you know, and all that. Oh, you know, you're here. You're here. It's, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. Let's let them know. Y'all gonna see Rain in one of my workout classes. Oh, we gonna be in there. But, um... Um... Cause we all... So... No. Stay tuned. My first, um... Sorry. Oh, my fine. first motivational talk will be happening in July as well. I'm letting y'all know. I'm gonna pursue my American dream. Man, Just do it. I'm not pursuing no American dream. I'm here to pursue my dream. Ah, I'm here that. to share my story and share it with as many people as I can across this world and hopefully inspires others. And if it don't, it's okay, as long as you listen. <laughs> yeah. But no, I want to thank you for coming out. You thank know, you for and, having and me. And we always have a great conversation. I thought that was yes. good. I know we went from one thing to the next to another, but it's all That's about conversation, conversation is, right? It's not That's really right. a real view. So I appreciate no you taking your time. There's no way to have a conversation. Well, my crazy daughter right here running around. She's going to run. Say hi. Look, say hi to everybody. Say hi. Okay, wait, you got to go wait. over there real quick. Wait. Say hi. hi. All right, let me take a quick seat. Let me take a quick seat. Go play, go play, go play, go play real quick and I'm gonna come away. Give me Yo, my name is Okay, Okay, go ahead. Follow me on Facebook, Shakala Gooden. Um, my Instagram is Kala Quickie. Look out for this man, Rain Check Live. He's doing amazing things. Every thank time you, that he comes you. and interview me, I'm not gonna lie, I feel honored. I appreciate it. Because I like, you know, I think I'm, I'm super regular. And me too. So that's he, all it is. We just have a regular conversation. Nah, this guy's you not regular. Know? Did you yeah. see his modeling photos? Yeah, I brought a couple to add. I'm gonna add my four to that. Ah, you like that? I make it. It is hot. Mm. <laughs> nah, I like it. I'm joking. But definitely keep tuned with us. You gotta check out my YouTube channel. It's Rain Check Live. Yes. Um, I got all my videos on there. I'm trying to get some more people to look. I had like one or two views. I'm still little, but it's okay. We growing up. We gonna promote it. Yeah. And y'all look out for my show. It's coming back. Everything is coming back in July. Yeah. I'm back in action. Tell them the show. Tell them the show. Quickie with Carla. Make sure you look out for. And also, I'm gonna be starting. Working. So this is Rain Check, and we live, we live, we live, we live. Hey, we live, we live. She trying to have it. We live, we live, we live, we live. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. But I love my bro say, always do your thing. I mean, get your own own. So I mean, get yourself right before you get anybody else right, and then you know you can do everything else you need to do. But this, hey, she get a little crazy back here. But this Rain Check. And we